These here are Ee Toy onions. They are a um, American Indian heirloom, and these are also being grown for sale on eBay. They're on the Slow Food Arc of Taste endangered food list, and um, they're pretty neat. They you plant one and it grows a cluster. Um, these clusters are actually pretty small. This bed never does that well, and I didn't take very good care of it. As so often happens, and um, but they're tough, 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 tough. They're from the southwest. Um, the people they come from are, I think, uh, what we know as Papago usually, but they, um, of course, that's a name as usual given to them by somebody else, and um, their name, the proper name is um, something like Adam, but I can't pronounce it properly or say it right because I'm, I'm not, don't speak that language. Anyway, they're pretty neat. They're like little tiny miniature shallots. And they can grow a lot bigger than this if you take good care of them. And they could be harvested for um, scallions or left to mature as bulbs. They can be planted and just left to grow continually and cut as kind of like chives. But if you want any anything close to a decent sized bulb out of them, you need to divide them and replant individual cloves each year. Um, succession zucchini, when the other one starts to taper off, this one will be producing. Green beans, I'll just keep putting little spots of, you know, tripods of green beans um, every three weeks or so through the summer, so I just have a continuous supply. At least that's the idea. Tomatoes, I have uh, Paul Robeson, an orange tomato that was given to me by a local woman who saves seed. Um, Zapotec, which is a really great um, processing and salsa tomato, but also really good for slicing, very rich flavor. I'm a big fan. Paul Robeson, did I say that? Uh, excellent slicing tomato. Outstanding. Everyone that tries it is a big fan. Highly recommended. And then on the end, I think I have Blue Beach, which is a very large processing tomato that I use for canning whole tomatoes. This is just some scallions I left to go to seed to, um, cause I save a lot, quite a bit of my own seed, which I often share and I'll probably be giving some away on YouTube and some more on my website. Um, this is a, another squash. So this will be another succession. And these are crookneck. I used to grow crookneck all the time because it's more, it's a much richer flavored squash than zucchini. But for some reason lately I've developed a taste for zucchini. So I've been growing those. These are just some scruffy rootstocks that were in a bucket of water until like two days ago. <laughs> and um, they're not very happy, but as long as they survive and grow a little bit, they'll probably be fine for grafting apples onto next year. So these are just some scruffy, most of these are like root suckers basically. And then this one here is the apple tree that I grafted in my inner stem apple tree grafting video. And it also sat in a bucket until just, you know, on the summer solstice. But I think they'll all do fine, actually. Um, you know, not great, but I don't even need this tree. I just planted it because I didn't want to waste it. And it was, you know, a demonstration for my video. So uh, these are the peas. They're obviously done, but I'm leaving all the pods I didn't pick on. Um, and I'll harvest all those for seed. Um, and I've probably harvested three generations of this seed now, and I pick out the longest pods, so the genetics have definitely migrated towards having longer pods. Pretty cool. This is another biochar bed, which is, I think, 5%, or let's see, 10% here, 5% there, and none down there, buried about 10 inches deep. I haven't really noticed much on that. The first year I grew lettuce in it, it didn't grow well at all um, because of the nutrient drain effect. But since then, it just, I don't really see a big difference between the three sections. These are tree collared experiments. So my friend brought some seed back from Montenegro and if anyone's not familiar with tree collards, which most people aren't, these are basically a perennial collard and they just keep growing bigger and bigger and they'll get, you know, very tall. And the one that everyone grows that's commonly propagated around here and people kind of pass around cuttings is, I think it's run down, you know, I, I think that it probably has picked up diseases over the 
however many hundreds of years it's been propagated. And um, these seeds that my friend brought from Montenegro definitely made plants that have bigger, juicier, tastier leaves. The cool thing about tree collards to me is that they don't go to seed. Like very rarely they will flower and when they do they usually don't produce any seed. So they're kind of this, you know, just continually growing perennial vegetable. When the plant gets kind of too big or starts to fall over or something, you just cut off some pieces and plant those and grow it from new cuttings. So my purpose here is pretty much to try to find a few plants that resist bolting and resist going to seed. So far, not so good. Um, my guess is that this project isn't going to go that well and everything that's made it past about two years has ended up going to seed so far. So I'm probably gonna end up pulling all these out next year, but for now they're just occupying ground I'm not using. They look pretty bad. That's because I haven't watered them a single time this year. And as you can see from the hills around here, it's, um, it's rather dry all summer. It won't rain again probably until October. And here is the other oblique cordon apple row. So I think that's about it. I don't want to make this run on too long. There's many, many talking points I could go into here, but um, I'll just take a quick look at the artichokes real quick. So these artichokes are planted at the bottom of the garden, roughly on, on the hillside contour. And that way, anything that washes off the beds, they sort of stop and it has to go through and infiltrate into the bed. And um, I've had that arrangement in my last two gardens. It works really well. They're basically big giant weeds. They grow a lot in the winter and the spring and then about now they start to die back and they just hang out until it rains again. And these are big plants. They produce, um, you know, 30, maybe 30 artichokes a piece. I, I've counted before, but it's on my blog somewhere, but I can't remember exactly how many. Most of them are Imperial Star which I highly recommend. It uh, doesn't really have spines. Um, it's healthy, it's huge, it's productive. And yeah, all around, uh, I think it's probably the best one. I do not like Green Globe, which is what everyone grows. And I wouldn't recommend that, but there'll be more, more coming on artichokes and canning artichoke hearts and different things like that. Now let me show you just one more project. So I had this idea for a migrating trench system that just serves as a place to catch everything that has reached the end of its use, you know, kind of generally end of its usefulness, but that will act as a soil conditioner or soil food and mixed with charcoal. So this was a two and a half foot deep pit and it could be used as a latrine or it could be used uh, just to, I've thrown in animal guts and scrap like meat scraps stuff I generally don't want to put in the compost for some reason ends up going in here I've burned charcoal in it and I've also just added charcoal from other projects like say I just burned a big pile of charcoal and all the stuff that was mixed with like dirt and gravel on the bottom of the pile I just rake up and throw into here so this is going to be an artichoke planting site and my guess is this artichoke is going to be at least 10 feet across and hopefully it will stay that way and continue to thrive and grow much better than the rest of these because the rest of these are in regular soil they um, you know there's quite a bit of rock in this area so in this bed I pretty much took all the rock out etc etc so pretty cool I'm really excited about this project and I know it sounds simple but I think the ramifications are fairly big for incorporating the use of biochar and all these other things that we have around that we don't even have a word for. You know, what's, what's the word for something that still has value as a soil builder or, you know, can be used in this sort of rubbish trench type situation, but, um, you know, isn't trash? What, what is a word that doesn't say that that's waste? Because it's not waste, it's valuable. It's, you know, that's not an abstract idea. It's definitely valuable, but we just, you know, our language is so centered around waste. It's the same thing with, um, you know, human uh, excrement. Uh, we just, what, what do we call it? Waste. It, it always ends up being a word that has to do with waste. So uh, this is pretty cool. It's almost full and then I'll plant my artichoke on it pretty soon and uh, we'll see what happens. Pretty cool. 
down here is just some more orchardage and way down there is my apple seedling trials but that's another walk around um, pretty quick here i'm going to do a little video about my apple breeding project kind of just a little tour of some of the stuff i already showed you but i'll talk more about it well thanks for watching and just as a, a little aside uh <clears throat> disclaimer or something like that i uh i feel like this garden is inadequate to my um you know people come here and they say wow that your garden looks really great wow you know and i'm like well you know relative to my food producing goals of you know being a little more self-reliant and involved in my food supply not really to me um a lot of this garden is taken up by as you can see one two three four beds of onions in this garden alone and there's some scattered around elsewhere just you know to make money basically so that really cuts into my food production supply and while i would like to manage this garden better and use you know i'm not even using all the beds like this forward section right here will actually be beds um you know hopefully pretty soon there'll be three beds here too but the truth is um that you know i can barely keep up and maintain this one the last two years i haven't you know this actually being in such good shape right now is really encouraging and really shows you know the improvement i've made in uh, my health so uh yeah i guess uh you know to me i know other people see it differently but at this point you know i'm not even really eating that much food out of here and i find that fairly disappointing because i could if i managed it better and uh you know everyone has their own perspective so i don't i'm not like beating myself up over not being better at it but it is a, a little bit of a disappointment to me that i'm not um you know keeping up with what my normal goals would be i'm not interested in being completely self-sufficient um, at all actually i don't really think that's um, a worthwhile goal um, being able to do that you know definitely i think that's that's great if someone you know can get to the point where they could really do that but to actually do it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me and um, that's not really my goal but i would like to be producing quite a bit of my own food supply and i really like being involved in my food supply i've been buying a lot of food for the last couple of years and i just find it um, part of the whole experience is missing for me because for a long time before that i've really um, ver barely ever bought like a vegetable and um, yeah just kind of eat what i have and pro you know process my own meat um and i you know something's missing when i'm not doing that so okay thanks for watching again